Number 54. Perform the following calculations and report each answer with the correct number of significant figures. Okay, we did a very similar problem like this with number 53. So if you want the whole backstory, go and check out number 53 before you do this one. This one's going to be like the quickened version. So just know that we have to deal with multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction with sig figs. So here are the rules just quick. If you're multiplying or dividing with your sig figs, you will take the least total of sig figs, significant figures. So least total versus if you were adding or subtracting, you would take the least after the decimal. So aka you take the least to the right of the decimal in significant figures. So wherever the decimal is, you look to the least after the decimal. So that is the rules in a nutshell. Now we just got to apply them. So I see that I have A through H here. So I'm just going to write A through H, just give myself a little space. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Okay, so now let's get down to business. So letter A, 62.8 times 34. So for all of these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the actual answer, write it down, and then we will round appropriately. So I'm going 62.8 times 34 into the calculator, and I get out this big number of 2135.2. Now we got to figure out what the rounding is. So this is multiplication. So it's the least total sig figs that you multiply together. So how many sig figs are in 62.8? There should be three, right? All non-zeros are significant. How many sig figs are in 34? Two. So what number of sig figs should we have in our answer? The least number. So it's going to be two in our answer, not three. So this answer needs to be rounded to two sig figs. So now let's do the rounding. I'm going to keep my two. I'm going to keep my one. And the next number will tell me if I round or not. But 3 is less than 5. Remember those rounding rules. 3 is less than 5, so you cannot round. Now I'm just going to say over here, rounding rules. If it's 5 or above, you round up. And if it's 4 or below, you keep the number. So since this is a 3, you cannot change the 1 to a 2. It has to stay a 1. So this would be a 2, 1. But now I need placeholders for these two spots because the decimal is over here. And remember, placeholders are always zeros. So I need a 0, 0. Now if I keep the decimal here, these zeros would be significant, so I have to get rid of them. I, well, I have to get rid of the decimal because I only want two sig figs, and now those zeros are not significant. So you could either leave it as 2,100, or you could put this number into scientific notation. You want the decimal here, so it would be 2.1 times 10 to the, you had to jump, one, two, three places. So it would be 2.1 times 10 to the third. Remember, for bigger numbers, generally we like to put things in scientific notation. But they didn't say, so it's your call. So that's the answer for A. Let's go to B. Now this is all addition. So now we have to take the least number of sig figs after or to the right of the decimal. So I'm going to just link them up like this. I'll say 0.147 and then I'll put them in the same placeholder. So I have a 0, 0 here. You see how I'm doing that? 6, 6. So the 7 of the first number and the 6 of the second number should line up. And then I have 0 0.012. And I'm going to add all these up. So like before, let's get the full number and then we will round. So 0.147 plus 0 0.0066 plus 0 0.012, 
I get 0 0.1656. Now I only are looking at the sig figs after the decimal. So here's the decimal. How many sig figs after the decimal for the first number? One, two, three. So there's three sig figs here. How many sig figs for the second one? These zeros do not count because they are leading zeros. Leading zeros never count. So these are the only two. So that's two sig figs. And how many sig figs count here? This one is also a leading zero, so it doesn't count. So one, two, two sig figs. So between these three numbers, two is the smallest. So this answer needs to have two sig figs in it. So let's find it out. One and six, the next number will round up because it's five and above. So this six would really be a seven. So it'd be 0 0.17 and there's your two sig figs. So that's your answer for B. Okay, back to multiplication. So we don't have to line up multiplication. So I'm just going to say 38 times 95 times 1.792. Let's get the full answer and then we will round. So 38 times 95 times 1.792. This looks like it's going to be a very big number. Now, this one, 38 times, I just want to make sure I did it right. Okay. So this one comes out to be 6,469.12. Now, how many sig figs? We're in multiplication world, so it means least total. So we're back to finding the total sig figs for all of them. So for the first number, I have two total, the three and the eight both count. For the second one, both the nine and the five count, so that's two. And then the third one, one, seven, nine, two, they all count, so that would be four sig figs. The least total is two. So this answer should be boiled down to two sig figs. So let's find out where they are. This six and this four. The next number will round up the four to a five because six is five and above. So this would turn into six, five, but since the decimal is here, I need two placeholders. And what do we use as placeholders? Zeros. But remember, you can't keep the decimal there because then those zeros would be significant and you would ruin the two sig fig rule. So you could either have it as 6,500, 6,500, or if you wanted to put this in scientific notation, it'd be 6.5 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3. So either one is acceptable. I'll just box off 6.5 times 10 to the third. But that's the answer for C. Now we're back to subtraction. So adding and subtraction, right? So now I'm going to line this up. So I got 15. And then now the decimal should be over here. This is a 0, 1, 5. And then the next one is 0 0.6155. And I'm all subtracting these numbers. So just like before, I'll do the actual subtraction. And then um, we'll round. So 15 minus 0.15 minus 0.6155, I get 14.2345. Now let's see what we need to round. This is subtraction, so it's the least after the decimal. So for the 15, how many numbers are after the decimal? Well, none, right? I don't even see a decimal here. So this would be zero. Now if we just did the other ones, how many sig figs after the decimal here? The 1 and the 5. So that would be 2. How many sig figs after the decimal for the third number? The 6, 1, 5, and 5. So that would be 4. But nonetheless, 0 is the lowest number after the decimal. So that means that we should have 0 sig figs after decimal. You don't care about what comes before the decimal. You only care about how many sig figs after the decimal. So here, I'm going to keep the 14 because they're before the decimal. They're to the left of the decimal. But I should not have a sig fig here. So this is going to be my rounding number. So this 2 will 
tell me that the 4 has to remain the same because it's 4 and below. So this answer would just be 14. No sig figs after the decimal because we had 0 after the decimal. So that answer is D. Halfway there. All right, so now I see that I have multiplication and division. So 8.78 times 0 0.0500 divided by 0 0.478. Okay, so with this, multiplication and division can happen at the same time from left to right. Remember PEMDAS. Now, technically, there's a parentheses here, so PEMDAS parentheses is first, but it's all multiplication and division. So we'll just do these parentheses first just to keep them in PEMDAS rule, but just know that you can do this all in one shot. So let's do the parentheses first. Um, so I'm going to divide 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.478, and I get a really, really, really long number. So I'm just going to write out a couple of numbers, and then we will simplify. So let's just say that it ends like this. So this is division. So it's the least total overall. So how many sig figs were in the first number? Well, these don't count because leading zeros do not count. But these zeros in the back, those are trailing zeros. And remember, trailing zeros only count if there's a decimal. Was there a decimal here? Yeah, there was. It was right here. So these, this 5 and these two zeros count. So there's three sig figs on the top. And how many sig figs on the bottom? This zero doesn't count. I should keep it as a green to keep the colors consistent because that's a leading zero. Leading zeros never count. And then 4, 7, 8, there's 3 on the bottom. So this answer should have 3 sig figs. So 1, 0, 4, this 6 will tell me if I need to round, and yes, I do. So it's 0 0.105. Now I'm going to multiply that with 8.78. So I'm just going to write that over here. 8.78 times 0 0.105. I'm going to do the math, and then you round. So 8.78 times 0 0.105, I get 0 0.9219. How many sig figs were here, though? Well, the first one, 8.78, there was three sig figs, 8, 7, and 8. And then the third one we did before had three sig figs. So the answer should have three sig figs, the 9, the 2, and the 1. This 9 tells me that the 1 should be round to a 2. So I'm just going to put the answer over here. 0 0.922 is the final answer for E. Okay, now we're back to addition. So let's stack them up, and then we take the sig figs, the least number of sig figs, to the right of the decimal. So I got 140 plus 7.68, and I'm lining them up in their places, and then I see that I have a zero point, so all the decimals should be lining up in the same spot, 0, 1, 4, and I'm adding these together. So we add them all, and then we... Um, Round. So 140 plus 7.68 plus 0 0.014. I get 147.694. And now let's see. How many sig figs are to the right of 140? Well, I don't even see a decimal here. So this one is zero. So if you find one that's zero, it's always going to be that answer for addition and subtraction for finding your sig figs. But just for practice, let's just finish this out. How many sig figs are to the right of this number? Well, it's the 6 and the 8, so that's 2. And then how many sig figs for this one? This 0, remember, doesn't count because it's a leading 0, so 1 and 4, so there's 2 here. But nonetheless, 0 is the lowest number, so this answer should have 0 sig figs after the decimal. So the 1, 4, and the 7 count because they're before the decimal. And that means that this number doesn't count. But it still will tell me if I need to round. And it's a 6, so it's 5 and above. 
So I will round this to 148. The 7 becomes a 8 because of that 6. And that's the answer to F. G is another subtraction. So we're going to just line them up. 28.7 minus 0 0.04. Eight, three. Subtract them and then round. So 28.7 minus 0 0.0483. We get 28.6517. How many sig figs to the right of the decimal for this one? Well, it's just a seven. So there's one here. How many sig figs to the right of the decimal here? There's three. One, two, and three. So this would be three. What's the lowest? It is one. So that means that I need one sig fig after the decimal for this guy. So I'm going to keep the 28 because we don't care about how many sig figs before the decimal. But here's my one. It's the six. So the next number will tell me if I need to round it. And five or greater. So this six would turn into a seven. So my answer is, I'm going to put that over here, 28.7. Box that off. That's your answer for G. Last but not least, this one is the only one that has a combination of the two rules. So this you have to follow PEMDAS. So I see that I have um, subtraction first. So I'm going to do it first. Let me just write this down. 7.57 divided by 45. 0.13. Now this one I'm not going to line up um, my subtraction. Let's see if we can figure it out without lining it up. So I'm going to do the subtraction. So 88.5 minus 87.57 is just 0 0.93. Now let's see. Here's the decimal for the first number. How many sig figs after the decimal? It's just the 5, so it's a 1. How many sig figs to the right of the decimal for 87.57? There's two of them. It's a 57. So which one is the least? One sig fig after the decimal. So that means that this number has to be rounded to one sig fig after the decimal. So it's just the 9. This 3 just tells me that I have to keep the 9 because it's lower than 5. So now you have 0.9 divided by 45.13. So I have 0 0.9 divided by 45.13, and I get 0. Point, oh gosh, don't you love it when that happens? OK, 0. 0. 0.0199. It's a big number, meaning it trails off, so I'm just going to keep it as a 4. Now this is division, so you take the lowest total. How many sig figs for this one? Total, there was one. How many sig, for, sig figs for this one? There was four total. So your answer should only have one sig fig total because of the division rules. So let's see. The one is right here, but the nine is greater than five, so that tells me that the one should be a two. So I'm going to just put the answer over here. This one would be 0 0.02. And there's your one sig fig for your answer. Whew, a lot of work, guys. But I hope you guys understand now your sig fig rules with addition, subtraction, multiplying, and dividing. And if you need more practice, go check out the one before, number 53. It's the same one like this, but with more practice. I can guarantee you that if you do this and 53 and you understand what's, what's going on, you will ace this part of the test on your upcoming exam. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you wouldn't mind, click that subscribe button. It would help you guys out, too, because you would know when the next set of answers is coming your way. Um, anyway, I wish you guys all the best. I'll see you all in the next video. Have an awesome day, guys. See you later.